Hi everyone, welcome to part two of the series of videos that I'm preparing in order to make you understand how to prepare holes and clean these cargo holes in preparation of loading bulk cargo on bulk carrier vessels. So I hope you've watched part one. If not, then the link to part one is in the description section below. Make sure you watch part one. I have discussed a number of things in part one of the video. In part two of the video, I'll take up some more topics that should be discussed that you should be knowing about before you go for your written or oral examination. This video will benefit you irrespective of whether you have sailed on bulk carriers or not, because uh, this uh, shows you lots of pictures and helps you to understand the operations that take place on a bulk carrier towards preparation of cargo hold before loading cargo. So the more pictures you see, the better understanding you have of the operations and uh, you will be able to answer questions better uh, in the examination. So I hope this video benefits you. I'll straight away start from part two and we'll start with the surveyors inspection and requirements. So prior to loading uh, any kind of grain cargo or bulk cargo, all ships are usually subject to a survey by an approved independent surveyor. Now the surveyor will require uh, the ship's details and details of all the last three cargoes. So they will, he will, he will, he or she will ask for the ship's particulars and the details of the last three cargoes that have been carried on this ship before he allows you to load the next cargo. So he will inspect the holes for cleanliness and any kind of infestation and the presence of any material that could lead to infestation or contamination. When the surveyor is satisfied, he will issue the ship with a certificate to confirm that the holes are clean. However, this is not a guarantee that the holes are perfectly clean and that no cargo claim will result. In the dry bulk trades, there are essentially five grades of hold cleanliness. It's called hospital clean or stringent cleanliness. Then we have grain clean or high cleanliness. Then we have normal clean, shovel clean, and load on top clean. So hospital clean is the most stringent uh, requiring the holes to have 100% intact paint coatings on all surfaces including the tank top, all ladder rungs and undersides of the hatches. So the standard of hospital clean is a requirement for certain cargoes such as uh, uh, chrome ores, soda ash, rice in bulk or high grades of wood pulp. Now generally these high standards of cleanliness will only be met by vessels trading exclusively with such cargoes. Uh, it will rarely be required in the tram trades, tram trades where the vessel is carrying different types of cargoes in every watch. Grain clean is most common requirement. Uh, a ship will be required to be grain clean for the majority of the bulk and break bulk cargoes such as grains, soya meal, soya products. Some ports and shippers may allow a different standard of cleanliness. Normal clean means uh, that the holes are swept clean with no residues of the previous cargo and washed down. Uh, or not depending on the charter's requirements that is it is cleaned sufficiently for taking cargo similar to or compatible with the previous shipment then we have shovel clean which means that all previous cargo can be removed with a bobcat or a rough sweep and clean with shovels by the stewardors or the ship's crew the master should clarify what standard is expected and finally load on top means exactly what it says the cargo is loaded on top of the existing cargo residues with load on top, guidance may be necessary for the master on cleaning requirements, including the use of bulldozers and uh, cleaning gangs. Uh, the load on top normally occurs when a ship is employed under a contract of a freightment to carry, for example, single grade of coal over a period of time. So grain clean, like I said, is the most common form of uh, cleanliness requirement. The usual instructions uh, include a master of tramping conventional bulk carrier will receive uh, particularly if the ship is unfixed for next employment is to clean uh, to grain clean on completion of discharge. This guidelines uh, is aimed at majority of bulk carriers engaged in the carriage of usual bulk cargos. Now, uh, what is loose scale? Uh, it is important to differentiate uh, such scale from oxidation rust. Now, loose scale, uh, as you saw probably in the previous uh, screen, will break away when the struck with a fist or when light pressure is applied with a knife blade or a scraper under the edge of the scale. Now oxidation rust will typically form on bare metal surfaces but will not flake off when struck or when light pressure from a knife is applied. 
Now, generally, the presence of hard adhering scale within a hold is acceptable in a green clean hold. The scale should not fall during the voyage or during normal cargo operations. Now, countries apply different standards to what constitutes an acceptable amount of loose scale or loose paint. Uh, while in some countries no such material is permitted, there are many countries uh, where hold can be deemed unfit. So, in practice, the hold should be free of loose scale as each surveyor's interpretation of the required standard may vary. Now, the quantity of cargo residues remaining in a hold at the completion of discharge may vary considerably for a variety of reasons. The master may have control over some of these. For example, after discharging a steel cargo, it may be possible to persuade the stevedores to remove lashing materials, which will greatly assist the crew in the hold cleaning. Often a charter party will specify that the ship is to be re-delivered, swept clean or shovel clean. If it is swept clean, the stevedores at the discharge port should sweep the holes before completion of discharge in order to minimize the remaining residues. If it is shovel clean, the stevedores need do no more than discharge cargo that can be easily accessed with a mechanical shovel. If a ship is re-delivered with holes that are shovel clean, several tons of cargo might remain in each hold. This must be swept up by the crew and brought on deck for disposal as permitted. Hold cleaning and cargo removal might take weeks depending on the amount remaining on board and available resources. During the sweeping operation, care should be taken to ensure that any residues that may be trapped in places such as accessible pipe guards, access ladder trunkings, behind frames are removed. Hatch cover undersides, if not boxed in, are swept to remove any residues that may have accumulated under the hatch covers. Hatch combings, hatch trackways, hatch ladders and internal ladder spaces should be cleaned. And during the sweeping process, the whole bilge wells, the hold bilge wells should be opened and cleaned to remove any residues that may have fallen into them. The parts of the hold that crew can access for cleaning may be limited, particularly in large handy max or panamax or cape size ships because of the dimensions of the holds. Some high level access may be possible only with scaffold towers if these can be safely rigged. Even with such equipment, there will be areas that are inaccessible. Once sweeping and removal of the residues has been completed, the next task with most bulk cargoes is to wash down the holes and hatch covers with seawater. This seawater may be delivered from hoses at the pressure supplied by the deck fire main. When washing down, the crew should take care to ensure that the upper reaches of the holes are washed thoroughly to dislodge any residues that may be trapped in the upper structure behind pipe guards or cross structures and cross deck structures etc now this is particularly important in parts of the hold that are physically inaccessible for the crew during the wash down loose paint or rust scale will be dislodged particularly where the water is delivered by an enhanced delivery systems or high pressure jet systems now depending on the nature of the previous cargo this wash down may be sufficient with certain cargo's residues or staining may remain even after a thorough wash down. To remove these, it is necessary to use targeted chemicals. For cargo such as coal and pet coke, which leave staining, it is often necessary to use heavy duty alkaline detergents, which are applied as an emulsion. They need time to take effect and are rinsed away with seawater. More than one application will be needed to remove stubborn stains. If using chemicals for cleaning, reference should be made to the safety data sheets concerning safety precautions and handling. A common test in countries uh, is for the surveyor wearing light colored gloves to run his hand across the whole bulkheads. If there is any discoloration of the gloves, the hold fails the cleanliness survey. For cargo such as cement, which often leaves a sheen of residue on surfaces such as the sloping plates of the upper hopper tanks, it is necessary to use diluted acids to remove those residues. The most common acid is hydrochloric acid, which is also known as muriatic acid. The diluted acid is applied directly to the residue, given time to take effect and then rinsed away. Where residues are tenacious and they do not go easily, many applications of this acid may be required or the residue may have to be physically scrapped away by the ship's crew. When scale and rust have been removed by a high pressure water wash, it is prudent to check the holes a few days later since water caught behind paint and scale can later dislodge rust scales. The holes in any event should always be checked again before arrival at the load port to ensure that no previous cargo residue has been dislodged by the ship's movement and vibrations. 
steel plate manhole covers should be removed to allow access to the lid recess below and the container fittings on the tank tops, ladder recesses and platforms should be thoroughly cleaned. Any discoloration of the hold coating can easily become permanent if not properly cleaned after each or every second cargo. The use of chemicals is becoming more common. Studies have indicated success in protecting the paintwork and thereby allowing easier cleaning of cargo residue, breaking down the cargo residue or cleaning and degreasing after cargoes such as pet coke or coal ahead of a full seawater washdown. The chemicals should be washed off before they can dry. The use of a pre-wash can protect the paint coating of the holes and allow for a much easier cleaning after cargoes which are liable to stain. The pre-wash coating is applied in the same way as the cleaning chemicals and dries off as a clear protective film. This is then washed off after discharge. The pre-wash prevents the cargo adhering to the cold, cold surfaces. Pre-wash is less effective on rough, uncoated surfaces such as the whole tank top. Application in a handy max ship takes about 3 hours per hold. Pre-wash protects the paintwork and can reduce time required for painting in preparation for the next cargo. There are a number of products available and the manufacturer's instructions for mixing proportions and the safety precautions should always be followed. If the recommendation is to use only fresh water to apply the chemical, this should be followed. Otherwise, the application may be ineffective. Equally, without the use of the proper equipment, the application may not work. The applications are usually applied using special equipment that includes chemical tanks, um, mini jet with air pressures, uh, lance with foam nozzles and expansions and personal protective equipment. After leaving the applied chemical on the bulkhead for a prescribed time, the chemicals are washed off using a full seawater wash. The operator should always be finished with a fresh water wash or rather the operation should be finished with a fresh water wash. Always check the manufacturer's guidance on compatibility with paint systems. Also check with the charter and shippers regarding compatibility with the next cargo. Whole structures must be protected against aggressively corrosive cargoes, for example salt and sulfur. Lime washing is used as a protective coating before loading such cargoes. Lime washing is a physical barrier application, so the thicker it is, the better the protection but the more difficult it is to remove it. Effective barriers against corrosive cargoes are paintwork in good condition, lime washing and hold block. The more intact the paintwork, the less lime wash or hold block is required. Lime is manufactured from crushed and powdered limestone. The problem with lime wash is that it is difficult to remove, posing a similar problem to a light cement residue. So an alternative is a hold block, which is transparent and environmentally friendly product. Uh, the mixture of lime is uh, actually, uh, you take about uh, 75 kilos of lime and you mix it with some two to three kgs of sugar. And then you mix the uh, mixture with hot or warm fresh water and you mix it thoroughly so that pretty much forms the lime mixture there could be some more ingredients which I can't remember off the top of my head uh, so the mixture is to be applied with a roller or a spray uh, to a height as calculated by the stowage factor of the cargo so a thicker coat is then applied to those parts of the hold lacking good paint covering such as the tank top uh, special attention should be paid to areas behind the frames and to inaccessible places no bare metal should be visible. Sometimes a second coat may be applied. If during drying, rusting is visible, then uh, through the lime wash, this may stain certain cargoes. Uh, to remove it, use high pressure water washing and possibly caustic or citric acid cleaning chemicals. And regarding the hold blocks, the shipper should be consulted for the application rates, which depend on the hold condition. The hold block is easily removed using the manufacturer's hold wash. Once the washdown is judged successful and all residues have been removed, uh, the holes and the hatch covers should be rinsed with fresh water to remove any dried salts that have become deposited in the hole structure and the seawater previously used has dried. The degree of a fresh water rinse or of wash depends on the nature of the next cargo to be loaded. Some shippers, surveyors, terminals, for example, when loading floor spa, will carry out a silver nitrate test to ensure that the hold is free of all salt deposits. 
If the following cargo is to be steel, it is important to remove all chlorides in the hold as any sweating may produce salt water which could affect the steel. Uh, care should be taken when washing or when disposing of both cargo residues and washed on water to ensure that the requirements are as per Marpol NX5. So Marpol NX5 requires all ships of over 400 gross tonnage and above to have an approved garbage management plan and garbage record book. And I will not go into the Marpol NX5 right now, but those are the requirements that should be followed. So the garbage management plan should include minimization of cargo residue washed on water and its discharge. Any cargo residues and washed on water disposals or discharges should be recorded in the garbage record book. And the entries should include start and stop positions. Uh, finally, uh, I will not go take you through all the annexes of Marpol, but you may also in some cases may annex one may also apply uh, especially to all the ships and hold washings containing petroleum products uh, and uh, annex uh, I think those are the annexes annex one the different regulations and annex five so all that thing is applying uh, to any kind of wash on or disposing of those uh, washings uh, washings containing hold cleaning chemicals uh, such chemicals could in themselves be pollutants so if a substance falls within annex one or annex two which is noxious liquid substances, then the washings will have to be disposed of according to the annex requirements. So make sure you check with the suppliers and the manufacturers and the instructions if you are in doubt. So cleaning holes within or close to port limits may also require local regulations to be followed with respect to the disposal of hold washings. So always check with your local agents. It may be necessary to retain the washings on board sometimes or dispose of them uh, ashore using road tankers or approved facilities. So only approved companies sh should be used for the disposal of hold washings and then make sure you have the correct paperwork and receipts, hold them for a few years for uh, any flag state or post state inspections if they come on board. So I think uh, I'll stop part two here now. In part three, I will go and talk about uh, drying of the holes. I will talk about the bilge wells and the bilge line testing. I will talk about the internal water ingress that may happen and damage the cargo. I'll talk about the paint systems and the fumigation requirements and I will also talk about the hold inspections that are to be carried out by the chief officer, what to look out for, why the reasons why the hold inspections are failed or why people fail hold inspections and finally I'll talk about the hold cleaning equipment and that will be part three of this video series of videos. So make sure you watch all the videos to get a good understanding. I hope the use of pictures is making it easier for you to comprehend what I'm talking about. Um, let me know what you thought about these videos, whether they are beneficial or not, whether you want me to put up these videos in future, because I plan to cover other cargoes as well, such as steel coils and different kind of cargoes. And uh, the reason I do that is, of course, you can read about it from the books, but I have uh, access to a lot of pictures that I can use. And if the more pictures I show, the better it conveys the point. You will have a better understanding of the text if you see the pictures uh, rather than you memorizing the test you can see the pictures and understand what goes on behind the bulk carrier operations. So all the best with your study guys. I'll see you soon with part three of the video. Bye for now.